let's talk a little bit more about section two, those administrative rules. Here's two more administrative rules that are important, and that's rule 26 and 30. And in rule 26, rule 26 is called um, powers of rejection. And powers of rejection is important because even though there are there's evidence of approval on the equipment that you're using so there's a certification mark or there's a special inf uh, inspection label or there's a field certification label it could still be rejected by the ahu the authority having a uh, jurisdiction so it could still be rejected powers of rejection 2-26 it could be rejected if they determine that it's actually an inferior sample that actually went in for the inspection for the certification mark. Uh, they can reject it if it's actually being used in a condition that isn't associated with that equipment, like it, that's not suitable for that equipment. So it could have been, let's say, um, it, the certification mark or the uh, the labels, the inspection labels could have been for a certain um use but then it's being used for a different use then it can be rejected and also it can be rejected if the terms of agreement between the manufacturer and the certification agency organization haven't been met so what it says is that the regulators or the authority having jurisdiction even though the certification marks and labels are there uh they still can they do have the powers to reject and the last uh, the last administrative rule I'd like to talk about in section two is rule 230. And that's called deviation or postponement. And you see throughout the code these words, where a deviation has been allowed in accordance with rule 230. In accordance with this rule, it's one of the administrative rules. And it just means that not ever, the code doesn't cover every situation. There are safe situations that are not covered in the Canadian Electrical Code. That doesn't mean you cannot proceed. It means that you have to apply for a deviation that is according to your situation. And uh, of course, that's only if the situation won't compromise safety. And this section outlines how uh, to how to um, apply for that. All right, so that's really important. And uh, when you apply for that, the, the authority having jurisdiction has to review the request, they have to grant the deviation, and, um, and then uh, it, you have to clearly state uh, what you're doing that is different. And then you are granted special permission before the work is commenced. So I haven't written that here, but let's remember that this has to be before. Before the work has commenced is when you need that deviation or postponement. And that should really go without saying. So, uh, and the intent of this rule is also to allow deviations from the code um, installation requirements. However, it does, the intent of this is not to seek deviation on approved equipment. It's not for approved equipment. Approved equipment means it's approved specifically and you don't deviate from that. So that those are, this is my last video about powers or about uh, the administrative rules that are in section two. Let's talk next about the technical rules in section two of the Canadian Electrical Code.